What's up everybody? My name is O'Keefe Fish and in this video I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about the stoned ape theory. This is the famous hypothesis started by Terence McKenna, theorizing that psilocybin mushrooms played a major role in the evolution of human language, religion, art, and much more. So if you like this content, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Stoned ape theory is a hypothesis originated by Terence McKenna, who is a famous ethnobotanist who advocated for the responsible use of naturally occurring psychedelic plants. He theorized that psilocybin mushrooms were the evolutionary catalyst from which human language, projective imagination, the arts, religion, philosophy, science, and all of human culture originally sprang from. Now, it's a lot more complex than just some monkeys tripped balls on shrooms one day and became humans. Rather, this theory explains that psychedelic mushrooms were a big factor in our evolution over the course of tens of thousands of years. It all started around 100,000 BC in Africa, when the land started to become more desert-like. With phenomenon like major droughts and geological transformations, human forerunners were forced to look for new food sources. This led our ancestors to start following herds of wild cow, incorporating them into our lifestyle and our diet. Plus, our primate ancestors would flip over cow poop because they knew that bugs and grub would reside there. And if you don't know, one of the most common psychedelic mushrooms is found in cow manure. So our ancestors would inherently be ingesting this throughout the ages of time. There's even speculation that many religions who worship cattle could be correlated to the magic powers people would get from consuming mushrooms in cow manure. McKenna's hypothesis was that low doses of psilocybin improves visual acuity and edge detection, meaning that the individuals who were consuming psilocybin mushrooms were better hunters than those who were not, resulting in an increased food supply and in turn, a higher rate of reproductive success. Then, at slightly higher doses, the mushroom acts as sexually aroused, leading to a higher level of attention and more energy, rendering it even more beneficial as it would result in more offspring. At even higher doses, McKenna proposed that mushrooms would have acted to dissolve boundaries, promoting community bonding and group activities. It would make the primates more social, more loving, and feel more connected to each other, reinforcing tribal behavior. As a result, there would be more mixing of genes, greater genetic diversity, and a communal sense of responsibility for the group offspring. At these higher doses, McKenna also argued that psilocybin would be triggering activity in the language-forming region of the brain, thus catalyzing the emergence of language in early hominids by expanding the way they communicate. He also pointed out that psilocybin would dissolve the ego, and religion would start to be at the forefront of the tribe's consciousness, simply because of the power and the strangeness of the trippy experience. Almost like it would give them the innate belief in the understanding of what it is to be conscious. Therefore, according to McKenna, access to and ingestion of mushrooms was an evolutionary advantage for our ancestors, while also providing humanity's first religious impulses. Additionally, increased creativity would enhance tool making and diversify methods of hunting. As touched on earlier, he believed that psilocybin mushrooms were the mechanism from which language, imagination, the arts, religion, philosophy, science, and all of human culture originated from. So that's the gist of the stoned ape theory. Now let's articulate this more and try to make more sense of it. Currently, we share more common ancestors with fungi than any other kingdom. Humans and animals are biologically closer to fungi than we are to plants. And in fact, animals came from fungi. So that means that humans like you and I are technically fungal bodies. Yo, what's good my fellow fungal body? Another thing worth noting is that many bacterial diseases that affect fungi also infect humans, and even our best antibiotics that would fight against bacteria come from fungi. So taking all of this into consideration, let's backtrack a little to our ancestors who were hunters and gatherers. If you're hunting for food, you look for footsteps on the ground or traces of feces. The most significant mushrooms grow out of these feces, whether it be hippos, elephants, deer, cattle, etc. These very mushrooms are psychedelic and contain psilocybin in them which is what opens your brain up to these insane experiences. And these are very large mushrooms. So hundreds of thousands of years ago, if you're hungry, you're gonna see these big mushrooms and eat them. And then 20 minutes later, be catapulted into a crazy experience. Regarding the expansion of human consciousness, there is a huge scientific mystery that still isn't solved yet. And this is that we don't know how our brains doubled in size in the span of 2 million years. We don't know why this happened or how this happened. And there's no clear explanation for this. And stuff doesn't just randomly happen. Everything happens for a reason. There is science behind everything. 
And these mushrooms that our ancestors ate serve as a plausible justification for the incredible mystery of our brain expansion. This isn't something that happened with just one group of hominids one single time. This happened millions and millions of times over the course of possibly millions and millions of years. Psilocybin does many things. It substitutes the serotonin, becomes a more efficient neurotransmitter, activates neurogenesis, and causes new neurons to form new pathways of knowledge. These mushrooms give you empathy, more courage, a greater understanding of knowledge, and allows you to access and develop more senses that you weren't previously accustomed to before. People like to follow leaders who are courageous yet kind. People they can trust, who they know have been through a lot and have acquired wisdom through genuine experience. So basically, the more of these psychedelic experiences that they have, the more likely they are to be looked at as a leader. A leader who fully understands what is going on in reality and who is sincere and candid with their actions. But at the end of the day, there's still no way to 100% prove this phenomenon, which is why it's just a hypothesis. The stoned ape theory serves as a very good explanation, even though it is currently unprovable. I do have a lot more information on psychedelic mushrooms that I want to share with you. But first, please smash that like button and subscribe for more good vibes in the future. Follow me on the internet is completely free and I'd love to make you part of the journey. Now, if you want to learn more about psychedelic mushrooms, check the description below for a video made all about the key differences between psilocybin and LSD. That will go more in depth about what a trip really feels like. That's all for me today. My name is Lowkey Fish and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out. Low key fish in the house.